Hi, so I managed to get my hands on a, a Sweet Revenge, which is roughly the same thing as the Hammer Shot. Let's just open this up. Oh, another. There it is. So, nice. One handed firing. And I'm going to do a, a custom job on it. So I've ordered the uh, full metal conversion kit from Blaster Parts. It only took a few days to get to the UK, it's what's from Germany. They give you, essentially what you get is a metal trigger, metal hammer, a much larger spring. I believe it's eight kilograms, I don't know. Um, some lubricant, instructions on where you want you to put the lubricant just to wear and tear basically these two metal components rub so I believe the, the hammer operates the trigger or it they connects there basically and so on that point and all around that point they want you to lube up heavy which is fair enough and there's also um get it up the right way <laughs> a rather comprehensive set of instructions on um what to do with that. So what, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to disassemble this, I'm going to take out that plunger and I'm going to have a look to see if I can uh, maybe increase the pressure on that plunger using a little bit of electrical tape, lube it up obviously, change the spring, change out those metal pieces and we'll see how it goes. So I've wrapped a couple of bits of electrical tape just around there. Straight away I can feel the compression. Just that little bit tweeter. So hopefully that'll have a positive impact. Right now I've got to work out how to try and push um, these pins out of there. So that was the bit I was trying to get out and basically all you have to do is punch out that much of the pin before it just drops out. So that's one pin and hopefully, it's hard to see, but hopefully the ridged section on this pin is there. I can't quite see it, but so I'm just guessing essentially.
as you can see I've pulled out some of it and the rest should come out quite easily and let's clear out some of this mess okay so I'm just gonna test fit all the pieces into place before I um, put the pins back in that should go on there Pigs ears. So what we need to do is get that um, extrusion past that lever and then put this pin in. And then it should all fit nicely together. Should. Should. Right, so when putting back the trigger for the hammer shot or the Sweet Revenge or Sweet Destiny or 4x4, one of the tricky bits is this spring here. Now, I didn't get a good look at the spring as I took the, part, the working parts uh, apart because literally as I t took the, this top section off, it popped out so I couldn't actually see the placement but I gather from looking at some pictures on the internet that little bit uh, goes through the trigger mechanism. This goes on here on this bar and it needs to be, go in place. It's under pressure right there. And then you can see, so, I'll come back. I don't know. Somehow. Anyhow, so I'm going to have a go at screwing it all in place, seeing if it works. Thanks. Okay, so it took me quite a few attempts to get it all sorted. It's like one of those jigsaw puzzles where as you put one piece in, the previous piece you just put in pops out of place. It's quite a fiddle and so, not to mention the fact that once you've applied the lubricant, everything becomes slippery and you're constantly having to sort of wipe off sections to in order to gain a good purchase on it. Um, and it's, a very tight fit and oh that now it's got some real thump to it as you can see and yeah the hammer's quite tough this is a quite a macho gun oh, I think they might be not tightened up that screw quite enough just test all those don't want to over tighten them and end up um, tearing the threads out of the plastic. But yeah, I managed to keep that spring attached throughout. Oh, it's still, yeah, they give you quite a lot of lube, as you can see, and I've, I've got lots left. But 
means that everything you touch ends up slightly tacky. <laughs> but I am very happy with this so far. Okay, so basically, I need to take out this air restrictor. And um, there's a lot of dead space in here. And this piston comes forward, nice pressure. And the plunger goes in here. I'm gonna force air out here, but obviously this area of the front nozzle, air can tr get trapped in there. So not all of your air from here is going out towards your dart. So I need to sort that out. So I've just pried off the nozzle of the air plunger um, using a couple of small screwdrivers. Oh, unfortunately, I've damaged the clips um, either side in doing so. But that's not a terrible issue because I'm actually going to glue the nozzle back on just to really uh, maximise that air seal that it has. As soon as I took the nozzle off, the plunger, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, the air restrictor that had a spring popped out. So that's good because I wish to get rid of that. And I'm just going to clip out those little bit parts there just so that I get maximum air coming out into the rear of the dart. And I'll just tie that up there, make it nice and smooth, pretty. Not that it'll ever be seen, but it's always good if it looks nice. So that's that. And then I'm going to take out, you can see this, um, I don't know what it is, uh, like a rail system for the air restrictor, I guess. Unclip that with a couple of pliers. Blast it. There, and now we have freedom. Um, so what, I, as you can see, there's a, a large portion of dead space in here. So what I'm gonna do, let's get out of there and I'll place a pen. Mm, maybe that's a bit, yeah, that's a reasonable sort. Place a pen in there, fill around this area with hot glue to reduce that dead space. Hot glue it back on and it should be perfecto. And this should hopefully it should be a real meaty gun. Um, and look at this, I think there's a little too much uh, unused space there which I might um, might put a bit of plastic on that on the end of the plunger just there yeah if I put something there right there so that there's, there's no dead space within this hollowed out section that should be fine Okay, so I've measured the circumference of the plunger, which is roughly 2.4 millimeters or 2.4 centimeters. So I've got the corresponding 
template. We're going to cut that out on a bit of foam that I think is about three mil thick. And then I'm going to just cut it out. Um, I'll add a, a dob of hot glue to that end. And then because it's foam, I should just be able to push it through. And it should sit there and give it just just uh, reduce that um, that air pocket, as you will, so you can get maximum amount of force out through the back of the dart, and maximum amount through there, creating maximum velocity for the darts. Should be good. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a, a dab of glue. On the end of the plunger head. I hate these stringy bits of glue, they're annoying. Just get rid of that. He says. And then I'm just gonna and in the end I got uh, two thicknesses of foam and glue them together. Just gonna push that in there. Wait for that to dry before I test fit it and just test pull the hammer to make sure it doesn't catch anywhere. Obviously the good thing about using hot glue as opposed to say super glue or anything else is that it doesn't actually uh, bond to the plastic or melt any plastic like other super glues would. So that if I decide actually it's not suitable, I can pull it off, move the hot glue and there should be no problem, but let's just see if it pulls back without catching. It's perfect. So we've now reduced the dead space, thus increasing the amount of air we're forcing out. As you can see here, I used a hot load of hot glue um, in the side, in the end of the nozzle, making sure that the glue is uh, clear away from these edges, so this can fit back on there. Perfect. And there we got. Okay, so I fitted it all back together. Gone from some electrical tape just around this seal and added a few bits of hot glue here just to help it. And if I test fire it, it all works perfectly. Um, the uh, extra padding I've put in the plunger doesn't seem to come loose at all. It seems perfectly fixed. Um, I put my hand over the muzzle. You can feel the plunger won't go forward because there's no air escaping, which is ideal. That's exactly what we want. So it's now ready to be fitted back into my uh, Sweet Destiny pistol. Okay, so I've got my two halves of the upper receiver shell nice and cleaned up. Got the uh, the logos on, which will be uh, there and there. And I think there was some sort of health and safety warning down here. I think they're all smoothed off. Um, I still need to go over this with a very fine, maybe a wet and dry, um, just to make it super smooth. But before I do that, there's another thing I wish to do. So um, I'm not terribly happy with this shape here. Um, so what I intend to do, drill a hole here and here, and cut like a, a box shape out so that it, um, this shape is more, more like a Wild West gunslinger's uh, revolver upper receiver. 
Okay, so I've got um, this vinyl wrap. It's often used on cars for uh, a ch cheaper, quicker way of uh, spray painting or putting design work on bodywork. And um, yes, I'm gonna, using a, a hairdryer and a scalpel, I'm gonna try and wrap this portion of the blaster and uh, see how it works out. Okay, so I've wrapped the uh, first half of the shell. You can see it fits around rather nicely. This sort of product is much easier to uh, wrap around uh, simple shapes, which makes the Rebel line uh, quite useful for it. It'd be really difficult to do something like a strife in wrap, this, but this looks quite nice. See, I've made a few mistakes here and if I was a perfectionist, all I could need to do is simply heat it up with the hairdryer again, take it off and start again. But um, I'm going to be using this blaster um, in wars and stuff, so I'm quite happy for it. Just to have a few imperfections, it's, it's not a big drama to me. And um, this stuff's, you know, reasonably hard wearing. It's used on cars and stuff, so it can take a certain amount of abuse, um, but if it if it gets nicked, if it gets scratched, at any point you can just heat it up, take it off, change it, which is the beauty of the product, really. So all I've got to do now is the other half. This just came in the post from Monkey Mods. They've included a nice little sticker. Um, it's got a clear backing, I think. So it might look nice on my blaster. I'll have to have a look at that. And this, this is what I've been waiting for. This is very exciting. Um, it's really generous of them. This is the eight, uh, eight dart cylinder for the uh, Hammer Shot or the Nerf Rebel Sweet Revenge or Sweet Destiny. And they've generously, they've included eight Strike darts. Oh, as you, oh, there's a little bit of a chip there. Um, but it's made of metal. And you see there's a Blaster Forge PH written there. Oh, there's, there's two chips. It's a shame. Um, oh, Monkey Mods there. Stamped in, it, yeah. It's, I think it's aluminium, but it's got a nice feel to it. Darts fit nice and snugly. It's really smooth. It's not three D printed. This is cast, but it, it's it's very nice. I'm loving that, and it comes with this little baggie, which hopefully should have some uh, parts that will fit. Come on. Oh, I'm just so excited. <laughs> I can't get it out, she said. Okay, right, so this is 3D printed, I believe. You can see it's slightly grainy. It's white, um, which is the fixings. And I've already contacted uh, Monkey Mods and they said that I do need to just alter this bit. This is the bit that fits in there, I believe. And it's a slightly different shape on the Sweet Revenge to the Hammer Shot. So yeah, I'm just gonna need to trim that down, which shouldn't be a massive issue. 
Um, and then this fit, fit, fits in. Um, I'm not entirely sure how it fits. Shouldn't it be like a metal rod? I have no idea. Um, that fits in there, I guess. And let's get those out. guess that just fit right sorry I'm just being a bit thick that fits in there goes in there somehow um, I guess that bit goes over that Hold on, am I right in saying yep so all right that goes over that that goes over that that goes in there it's a nice snug fit which should help with the air restriction and um, ah, this is exciting times, like I say. So it's all fitted. The uh, eight dart cylinder is all in place. Um, I had a few problems to, <laughs> as you can see, I had to cut open part of the shell because the hammer was catching, which is unfortunate, but from this angle, uh, you can't really tell. But, uh, let's have a look at the capabilities of it. Oh, oh. As you can see, I'm having some feeding problems uh, where the cylinder just doesn't want to turn quite quite right. But it's got quite some power. So um, I'm more than happy with that. This is my Sweet Destiny Peacemaker, as I've nicknamed it. All finished complete with the Monkey Mods eight dart cylinder and the blaster parts, full metal kit and the, I think it's an eight kilogram spring. I took it to the Nerf Cave War at Chislehurst Caves in London, or just outside London, last night. It worked really well, I used this as a secondary. I found it, it really, really ergonomic. The action is smooth. I had a few uh, feed problem which is fixed simply by just a little help rotating. It was a little bit wet in the caves that might have uh, might explain something of what happened and also unfortunately I lost the monkey mod sticker because it, it got wet and it just slid off um, with a lack of uh, suitable adhesive but I'm really happy with my final blaster. Oh a uh, thing I haven't mentioned I just Put a, a hoagie grip on the end just to make it that, that, that bit more chunky because obviously as it's uh, part of the Rebel line, all the handles are a little bit slimmer and so I just needed something just to chunk it up for my slightly fat hands. Um, but all in all, I'm really happy with it. Um, let me know what you think. Do you think it's an attractive blaster? Does it, um, I'd love to hear about what other people um, have thought about the uh, upgrades I've used if they've used them in their blasters. So uh, yeah, just let me know.